Eitan Shalom, I'm back. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. I was talking about the walnut cookies that I made in those days uh, when I was a teenager and in 1971. And in those days, we did not have an electrical grinder. And I broke up or uh, crushed the walnuts in a mortar and pestle, pestle. Although the one that my mother had was made of brass. My sister still has that one, actually. A very old and nice one. So... Um, when I get the walnuts out of my um, electrical grinder here, if they're too, if some of them are are too big and haven't broken up, I will crush them in that manual. Yes, you can do things by hand. You don't always need machines. You can sweep sidewalks with a broom. You don't have to use a leaf blower. Okay, what's the change of plans? As I said, um, I love the flavor of anise um, with uh, walnut. And so I don't happen to have any anise. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use a particular variety of fennel called Lucknow fennel. Lucknow is a city in northern India. L-L-U-C-K-N-O-W. And the Lucknow fennel, oh my God, it's really floral and fragrant. It has a beautiful... There's a close-up of the Lucknow fennel. It has a very beautiful fragrance that's that's soft and light, um, similar to anise, um, kind of like in between anise and and regular fennel. Regular fennel for me is a little bit too heavy to use in one of these cookies. Okay, so now I what else are what other dry ingredients? I want to put in um, a little bit of raw sugar. That's about a, a I'm going to put in about a half a teaspoon. That's all I'm going to put in. Um, a half a teaspoon of coconut sugar, and then I'm going to add the goji berries, and I'm going to add the golden raisins, and are those all of my solid ingredients, my dry ingredients? Yes. So now I'm going to, this is a really rough way to do this, I'm going to mix this with the whisk, and you you could add um, you could add a dash of salt if you wanted. I'm not particularly partial to salt in cookies. Um, some people are, but you know cookies can be just so overly salty, um, and so um, I don't recommend more than a dash. Now, um, because my walnuts are not as ground up as I'd like them to be. I realize now that I need to add a little bit more uh, rice flour. Now, the thing about rice flour is, first, you have to be able to find it. Um, and second of all, the thing about rice flour is, unlike wheat flour, because it doesn't have gluten, um, because it doesn't have gluten, it uh, doesn't stick uh, very well together. You know, the, what, what gluten does in, in grains like wheat is it makes them sticky, and that's why wheat bread, it sticks to your teeth, and that's why um, pizza dough and bagels are made from high gluten flour, and that's what makes them so chewy or rubbery, if you will, and that's exactly why gluten, maybe why, why gluten, and certainly higher gluten, and not just gluten, but the gluteic acid in gluten, why um, it may be um, bad for you in the, amount, in the high doses of, uh, with which uh, people in the West eat gluten, um, the problem is always excess. And so the problem um, with uh, gluten isn't necessarily intrinsic to gluten. It's the fact that in our diet, uh, um, the standard American diet, with toast in the morning, sandwich at lunch, bread with dinner, um, people are eating insanely high amounts of gluten. And they're also... Um, the wheat that they're making standard uh, bread out of is hybridized so, so as to be way higher in gluten and also this thing called gluteic acid. So that might be the problem more than, um, uh, more than uh, gluten itself intrinsically. And, you know, you can get grains if you use wheat. You can get grains like Kamut flour from uh, older uh, non-hybridized versions of wheat uh, called um, Kamut and Spelt that probably are going to give you way less of a problem. Now, I'm a little bit cautious here. I don't normally have so many large bits of walnut. I think I was in a hurry to get this done, so I, I was a little less patient with grinding it. But 
let's see what happens. Um, so now the, the, I'm going to add the oil. And I might use a little more oil, we'll see. And I'm going to add a little bit of my kefir. Um, and now I'm going to use a spatula. See if I can do this with one hand. And mix it. This is a super close-up of mixing. And because I'm using one hand, I'm going to add some more kefir now. I don't want to use too much kefir because then it'll be too sour. Okay, we're getting the texture I want. So maybe, it, perhaps I didn't need to add that additional flour. I, that was all the pumpkin seeds I had. Normally, actually, I would have used in, uh, an equal amount of, of uh, pumpkin to walnut, or not an equal, but I would have used two parts walnut, but one part pumpkin. Okay, so that's a cookie dough right there. Um, am I forgetting anything? No, I'm not. So now, whoops, sorry. Very hard to do this with one hand. Now, I'm going to put the camera down for a second and just get, so I can stabilize the bowl and really mix it better than it is mixed. And enjoy the beautiful view of whatever you're seeing right now. Okay, and now... I have my cookie dough, which is just like any other cookie dough. And you can see, you can actually, you actually want to work the dough a little bit. And now you can see, you can kind of see the shiny color, the shiny color of the, of the, of the fat showing through. And so now normally I would use two hands, obviously, to make my little cookies. And actually, I'm going to put this down again and give you a beautiful view of something. I'm going to roll these up in the palm of my hand like a ball. And even with that little amount of fat, um, it doesn't stick to my fingers. And now I'm going to make little circles. And I'm going to uh, um, press it down on the cookie sheet. I'm going to have to wash my hands because I don't want to touch the camera with cookie dough on my fingers. I'm washing my hands, I'm drying my hands, and yes, I have a good sense of humor, I know. Okay, and what are you looking at? You're looking out the window. All right, so there's a cookie. I don't care about making perfect cookies. I could care less about that. I don't have a cookie cutter. Um, but when I'm using two hands, and I could, do, I'm going to post photographs of my cookies one of these days, um, I sometimes make them in squares, triangles. I have a lot of fun. So you know what? Children, get your kids baking with you. It's so much fun. Get them off of their damn cell phones and video games and have them touching things and, you know, tactile. So um, spend time with them doing things like that. You don't have to go to Disneyland. This is Disneyland. Okay, so that's a pretty round cookie right there. And that was my little speech about child rearing. Take it from me, who's never had children. Okay, so I'm gonna push that banana in a little bit. And now we, and now I'm gonna um, just put a little bit of sesame seed on top of that banana. It's just such a nice look. And so that's one cookie. And I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna do, gonna do the rest of the cookies and I'll be back.